Greetings everyone. Today we are going to talk about Zinyu. I am not going to waste any time and jump into the main factors that I am going to talk about today. The main reasons why Zinyu is going to be incredible. There are many reasons why, why, for why she is worth it. But the first one is definitely the design, lore and her gameplay. If you are thinking about that many people said that Jinglu is gonna be weak and stuff but I think otherwise right now because there are released skill kits of her and after considering a lot I guess she's worth it. She's worth the SP loss and she is also worth the risk of pulling like 180 times for her and her light goals. It's worth it now. Let me tell you why. Jinglu's skill, Transcendent Flash, if you didn't know already gives her one stack of size G. and when you get two stacks of size G, you get into the transcendence state and when on transcendence state her skill changes into moon on glacial river uh, the moon on glacial river doesn't give a lot of damage like Danheng but that is the specialty when you're on the transcendence state every ally loses six percent of their respective max HP once and Jinglu's attack increases based on 20 250% of the total HP consumed from all allies, capped at 60% of her base attack. It increases if you increase the talent's level, which is amazing. Also she is a skill point efficient, because she doesn't consume skill points when using moon on glacial river, it consumes one stack of size G. And her ultimate skill deals a massive amount of damage and it also gives you a stack of size G, which is Amazing, but I don't know that you can unleash the ultimate skill or not when on the transcendence state. When building Jinglu, doesn't matter if you have blade or not. Do not build Jinglu support characters like the Harmony with ASP. If you have like Natasha or Bailu or Linsk, build them on ASP because they are better with ASP. But don't build like Luota with ASP because Luza doesn't heal with HP and you don't need HP for Jinglu's transcendence stat. She like gets 20, I mean 250 percent of the HP consumed into her attack and capped at 60 percent, which will be easy for Jinglu to get the maximum attack out of the allies actually without building them on HP. If you build them on HP, it's your choice, but still, it's a waste. If you're thinking a lot about the Relic set, don't think a lot, I mean don't overthink, just choose the Hunter of Glacial Forest, it's just best for Jingliu, everything on it is just suits her. And remember, it's not Inert Sal Sato, the other planner ornament that you gain 15% ultimate damage with reaching 50% crit rate, choose the Rutilian Arena. It's a bit of a hard to reach like 70% crit rate but the 20% skill damage is worth it, but one thing, if you cannot build like no matter what a good amount of crit rate and crit damage ratio because you have to reach 70% on Rutilian Arena, you can choose the inner cells also. Our ultimate actually deals much more damage than a skill, but our skill is used much more than the ultimate. Our ultimate will be used, used like in 3 turns and she will use only once, our ultimate I mean. Unless you build her on energy recharge or if you have like an energy recharge thing gun, then it will be easy. Ding Liu doesn't only have an amazing background story and a strong skill kit, she also can be cute and cool at the same time. She can be scary too because her ultimate skill animation is kind of scary. So thank you guys for watching this video. Now we gotta wait for Ding Liu's banner. And I'm kind of confused because there is another upcoming character I want, but for right now, I'm waiting for Jin Luz because I kind of like her more. But it all depends on whether I can get the light cone, I mean, win the 50 50 or not. Because I'm on my 50 50, it's not up to me to get her or not, it's up to you know, luck. I wish you guys best of luck on your Jinglu warps and her light cone. See you next time.